When the first colonists settled Georgia in the 1730s, they didn't have much time for leisure, reading a newspaper, for example. They were too busy surviving, hunting for food, building houses, clearing forests. But as the colony grew, people needed more information about Georgia and the colonies to the north. Letters and word of mouth just weren't good enough or fast enough anymore. That's when the first newspaper was born. In the early years, taverns, people's homes, chance encounters between people on the road were places where Georgians exchanged the news. Letters from other American colonies, news from Britain and Europe could take weeks, even months, to reach Georgia. It was all the colonists had. For 30 years, Georgians were prohibited by the king from having a newspaper. But eventually, conversation and letters weren't enough. In the 1760s, agriculture and business were booming, and this colony needed a newspaper. Uh, there weren't very many sources of information back in the, the early days of newspapers. You know, the Chronicle started in 1785. You couldn't turn on the TV or the radio or even ask your neighbor, hey, what's going on? You had to have a newspaper that would tell you when the ship's coming in or when the cotton shipment is going out or who are the visitors in town, uh, what your government is doing. Government is hundreds, of, hundreds and hundreds of miles away. Uh, you can't pick up a phone and call your senator or fax something to, to your congressman. You had to read the newspaper to find out what was going on. An act of the legislature finally allowed a press in Georgia in 1763. Along came a printer, James Johnston from Scotland, who arrived in Augusta that same year. He was in the right place at the right time. The legislature quickly designated Johnston the royal printer for Georgia and awarded him a contract to print and distribute all official laws and proclamations. Soon, the Georgia Gazette was born, Georgia's first newspaper. Over the years, the Gazette was published under different names and publishers. A descendant of the Gazette is the Augusta Chronicle, the oldest newspaper in the South. But they were entertaining. They were very entertaining. People loved to read them. Even today, people look at the old newspapers and they laugh and they, they get a kick out of reading them. When you look at the articles and advertisements in these old newspapers, they really aren't much different from what you see today. Houses for rent, the circus coming to town, a man loses his watch and offers a reward, a store announces the arrival of a new shipment of goods, a bar is open for business. If you had something to buy, something to sell, if you wanted the news, then, just as now, you bought a newspaper. The Daily Newspaper. It's been a part of our everyday lives for so long that we sometimes underestimate it, take it for granted, and sometimes it gets no respect. The analogy I like to use is, is we're, we're like a politician who has to get elected, except we have to get elected every single day. If the readers decide we're not worth 50 cents, they're not going to put the 50 cents in the box, and we're out of business because nobody's buying our paper. You could have the best paper in the world, but if nobody reads you, if nobody trusts you, nobody believes you, you're wasting your time. You're just publishing for yourself, and um, you know, ultimately these papers are business, and you can't afford to not have any customers. Advertisers pay us to deliver an audience. Um, they don't, I don't think they care much what we give that audience, and they don't care what the content is, as long as we give them an audience for their advertising. Business needs a place to advertise its products. A paper needs those ads to pay for the paper and ink and salaries and the machines. And if the ads work, the business grows. And so does the newspaper, and so does the town. It sounds kind of corny, but I really thought that newspaper people could make a difference in their communities. Uh, here was a chance to make, make your community work, make your democracy work, uh, and, and it does work. The newspapers show people what's going on, they help them make informed decisions, and, uh, and I feel like I can have a positive influence on the place I live, and it, it feels good. Some say that newspapers are dinosaurs, that one day electronic versions on the internet will replace the printed word, but whatever the form, 
the need for news will be the same in the future as it was back then. The Georgia Newspaper Project is preserving Georgia's newspapers on microfilm. The oldest dates back to 1763. About Georgia's economic history, there are more stories to tell, so we'll be back. This is Georgia Stories 2. I'm Colin Seedor.